Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you've had some time to play with uh, f of theta equals sine theta, f of theta equals cos theta, and f of theta equals tan theta. We're going to kill three birds with one stone here. And we're going to talk about the more minor functions. Um, cotan theta, secant theta, and cosecant theta. Now, I say minor, that doesn't mean that they're less important. It just means that they're because they are related to sine, cosine, and tangent, um, it's really easy to get to them if we have to. The ones that we really want to memorize are sine, cos, and tan. So, like I say, we'll knock these off real quick. Let's talk about cotan of theta, which we know instead of being y over x is x over y. We know that secant of theta is oops, secant of theta is one over x, and we know that cosecant of theta is one over y. We'll talk more about these properties in the section uh, properties of of trigs. Now, again, just like we did before, we just cruise around to the points and we steal the points as we need to. But let's talk a little bit, just real quickly, and see where things change. The one thing that I'm hoping that you're going to realize from your Algebra 2 experience and from kind of playing with these is that if I'm going to grab these points off of this curve or off of the unit circle, then any time, because I'm talking about ratios here, for cotan theta, any time that y is 0, say, here and then over in the second quadrant, excuse me, at, at pi, um, I'm going to end up with asymptotic behavior. Anytime the x is zero, like there, I'm going to end up with asymptotic behavior on secant. And anytime again that y is zero, same thing as cotan y, hey, that's useful information. I know that I'm going to have asymptotic behavior. So there's going to be some, some ideas that you can play with around the asymptotic behavior of the trigonometric functions that have asymptotes like tan, cotan, secant theta, and cosecant theta. Okay, enough of that. Let's get over to the applet because hopefully now you know how this applet works and you can visualize how values are taken off. Let's talk about cotan real quick. All right, now, you ready? Here we go. We start at the point 1, comma 0. Now, it's cotan, so it's y over x, in this case it's u over v, right? Wait, I'm sorry, that's tangent is y over x, cotan is x over y. So since I'm at the point 1 comma 0, if I go x over y, guess what? I start out at an asymptote. And look at this, as I work my way through the first quadrant, look at what I carve out. All right. Now let's think about why that happens for just a sec. X gets smaller and heads to zero. Y gets bigger and heads to one. So as X heads for zero, the value of the cotan heads for zero. Now, here we go again. In the second quadrant, I know by all students take calculus that cotan is going to be negative because only sine and cosecant are positive in the second quadrant. So as I cruise through the second quadrant, here I go, here I go, here I go, and then look at negative one comma zero because it's x over y, all hell breaks loose again. All right, I have carved out one perfectly beautiful little swath of cotan theta. Now, third quadrant, I know I've got asymptotic behavior, behavior back here at zero. Oops, back here at zero, and then over here at pi again. All right, and then it pops up, whoop, just like that. Again, we're not afraid of that. We've seen this before with rational functions in Algebra 2. But we know that in the fourth quadrant, excuse me, the third quadrant, tangent and cotangent are positive. And I go from infinity. Now look, x is going from negative 1 back to 0, and y is going from 0 to 1, negative, excuse me, from 0 to negative 1. And then over in the fourth quadrant, because it's all students take calculus, and cosine and secant are the positive trigs in the fourth quadrant, so cotan is going to be negative, right? x is negative, y is, I'm sorry, x is positive, y is negative. I'm getting a little punchy here. We know that we're going to have negative values, and as x goes to 1 and y goes to 0, I blow up and go to infinity. And there it is. There's cotan. Now, as we talked about before, let's get this guy nice and big. As we talked about before, that applet has limitations. However, let's see, at pi, at 0, at 2 pi, let's stick a few of these bad boys on here. 3 pi, at negative pi, and negative 2 pi. We know that by that applet, we know that we get an asymptote here at pi and an asymptote here at 2 pi. And this guy looks ooh, like that. 
and this guy looks sorry about my scale not being perfect and you can probably imagine because it's just gonna repeat itself right once I hit 2 pi that's exactly the same thing as going back to zero but because these are theta values and these are f of theta values I know that I'm gonna end up with this guy same thing I get an asymptote at negative pi because remember how we define negative pi is just a clockwise rotation and I'll get the same values and then I get these guys right here. That's fascinating stuff, isn't it? All right, real quick, let's see if I'm going to get into Shady Town. No, this won't be too bad. Let's talk about the domain, and let's talk about the range of the cotan function. Well, again, the range, just like tangent, hopefully you can see that I all my y values get picked up because this thing goes from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. In other words, you give me an x, and I can give you any value between negative infinity and positive infinity, unlike sine and cos, where you can only get from negative 1 to 1. So negative infinity to infinity. Now let's talk about the domain. Notice I run into trouble at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi. So every pi I run into trouble. But it's easier to define the domain by what theta can't be. It's the set of all theta such that theta is not allowed to be a multiple of pi. Now again, ooh, this is going to get fady. I'm sorry. I ran out of room down here, but that's okay. So in other words, if theta is zero, if theta is zero, then I'm dead. I end up with an asymptote. If theta is zero plus, if k is one, so zero plus one pi, I get pi, and I'm dead. Two pi, three pi, negative pi, negative two pi. Okay, so there's cotan. Let's go ahead and, like I say, let's knock a bunch of birds out with one stone here. So let's do seek it.